we looked at um, 16 different pictures and um, from the Depression, anywhere from the late 1920s on up to the 1930s. And what I ask you to do with those is basically just look at them and respond to them. Um, what do you see? What do you think is going on? What do you think people are um, feeling? What are they doing? What are they experiencing? What are they thinking? And some of these are really easy to do that with because, well, they were just so well taken. They're just well taken um, photographs. So this one, for example, what's going on here? Who's fighting? The police. Who are they fighting? Where do you see some black people up there? Homeless people? Okay. What makes you think they're homeless? There's a tent. Does that mean they're homeless? Well, it could, right? Well, I think this fellow's got raggedy clothes because his shirt has been torn. So they're actually pretty well dressed. I mean, you look at these guys. They're, they're not too ratty, except for this fellow, but he's fighting with this policeman. What else do you see? American flag. American flag. Why do you think there's an American flag in the middle of this brouhaha? You know what a brouhaha is, right? It's a fight. Why is there an American flag in the middle of it? Does that look very peaceful? Maybe because they don't like America anymore. Huh. Okay. All right. So we do have policemen. The question is, who are they fighting? Are they poor? We haven't established that they're poor. They're civilians, right? They're not in uniform, but they had been. These are World War I veterans that had been promised a bonus that was to be paid to them in 1940. They decide that they want it earlier than that. Why? Because nobody has any money and they need some money. And so they are protesting. Um, they have marched on Washington. They are demanding that they get their veterans bonus from Congress now instead of later. So they have camped out in Washington, D.C. This is near the Anacostia River, which if, if you know anything about the geography of D.C., the Anacostia River is on the west, the Potomac's on the are on the east, the Potomac is on the west. They flow together to form the Potomac River as it makes its way to the Atlantic Ocean. So they're camped near the Anacostia River. They have been marching on Congress. They've been demanding that they get their bonus payment. Finally, Congress sends out the Washington, D.C. police, and this is the result. So they are fighting the police because the policemen are trying to get them to leave, to vacate. Why the flag? Why wouldn't veterans have a flag? They're, they're World War I veterans. Of course they would have a flag. Um, why this guy chose to tackle the guy with the flag, I don't know. But it's not a good look. So the police are not able to um, get the veterans out, so they call in the Army. Now think about that one for a minute. You're in the Army, it's 19, let's just say it's 1932, 1933. You're in the Army, and you're being asked to remove men who fought during World War I. Hmm. I don't think they were very happy that they had to do that. But they did. So this picture is pretty indicative of how people felt about the government, you have made us promises, now keep your promises. And for the most part, the government does not. Just notice something. Is this fella bleeding? Right there? Looks like he got hit in the head. Anyway. All right, what about this one? Who are these fine people? Huh? No, she kept her children. What, what do you see going on in the picture? They're watching the camera. They're looking at the camera. Why? Because their picture's being taken. 
something's going on with this guy's leg. I don't know what. He's got it propped up in a chair. Maybe he's hurt. He's got it propped up on a pillow. There's a dog, which means, are they having to feed that dog? Yeah. Some of the kids don't have shoes on. Nobody looks really happy, do they? But you got to understand, in the 1930s, 1920s, even you go back to the advent of photography, people didn't smile. George Washington, although we don't have pictures, photographs of him, we have paintings, and he refused to smile. He thought it was... Um, that to smile in public was not indicative of the office that he held. He thought it was it looked bad. It just looked poorly. And so he never smiled um, in any of his official sittings for photographs or for um, paintings. And these people just didn't smile back then when their picture was being taken. What else do you see? Which one? The, this one? If you were wearing that dress, wouldn't you? What else do you see? Looks like the boy's what? The boy was happy. He's kind of smiling a little bit. All right. What kind of house are they living in? Okay, it's got holes in the floor. Okay. These are actually sharecroppers. And we know who they are. And we know where they live. They actually live not too far from here, in Monroe, Georgia, which is that way. And we know their names. Would you like to know who they are? Would you like me to introduce the Mask family to you? This is Marie Mask. This is Dessa. That's the mama. The little murder child is Thelma. Explains a lot. Yeah. Her name is Thelma. This is Glenn. This is E.T. And again, we don't know what happened to E.T.'s leg, but something obviously has happened. And then I'm a Jean and Francis. The Mask family, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty indicative of sharecroppers in Georgia, really throughout the country. Because as the Depression moves on, we see many people moving where? From the Dust Bowl to where? Not north, south. not south, east. not east, west. moving west. What was west? California. California. Why were people moving west? That's what people thought. Thought the streets were paved with gold. Were they? No. Were things any better in California? No, and you're going to see that here in just a few minutes. And so, again, pretty indicative of what it was like for a family, a sharecropping family during the Great Depression. And again, if daddy's hurt, who does that work fall on? That son and the mom. And maybe I'm a Jean over here. She's the tall one without shoes. Maybe, yeah, she does. And, take, and she's got on shoes, so she might have been older. Hand-me-downs from Mama. This one is actually entitled. It has a title, and the title of it is One Third of a Nation. Hmm. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why it's one third of a nation. Except she represents maybe a third of a nation. And I just noticed, dang, I just noticed What's she holding in her hand right here? Can you see it? It's not money. I think she's got money in her right hand. She's counting it. But it just dawned on me what she has in her left hand. She has pencils in her left hand. She's selling pencils. So maybe that has something to do with one-third of a nation. Certainly it has to do with poverty. And is she a young woman? No, she's old. And what's she sitting in front of? You think she'll ever own that dress? No. no. Not in that economy. 
Not with what she's trying to do. She never will. All right. <clears throat> All right. So this, am I on the right picture? Yeah. Anybody know where that is? It looks an awful lot like the house we just saw in Monroe, Georgia, doesn't it? But it's not. It's actually south of here. It's in Troop County. And what do you notice about it? It's in the middle of nowhere. It's on a farm somewhere. And there's a little boy sitting on the porch. Can't tell if he's black or he's white. There's a good chance he's one or the other. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there were. Um, they were... If, if a child was mixed race, they were not accepted by either culture. Um, so life was difficult for them. Um, yeah, so that's Troop County, Georgia. Again, pretty indicative of how sharecroppers or tenant farmers live. All right. Yeah, what about this one? What about this fella? Is he dead? He's asleep. Why is he sleeping outside? We don't have anywhere else to go. What do we know about this man? Do we know anything about him? Just based on what he looks like or what he's dressed like? Okay, he's poor. What gave that away? Well... Got a hole in his coat. It's been patched. He's got buttons. He's got three buttons, but what? They're different, right? You look at his coat. It's ragged. What's he wearing underneath that coat? Okay. Well, what kind of pants do these look like? Some of you might have worn one to church yesterday if you went. Not a tux, but a, a suit. So this man's wearing a three-piece suit underneath his top coat. So that tells us, when he did work, what kind of work did he do? Do what? Might have been. Okay. Well, there are two types of workers. There are white-collar workers and blue-collar workers. What's the difference? Well, a white-collar worker would work in an office. A blue-collar worker is going to work with his hands. Either he's going to farm or he's going to work in industry or something. What do you think this guy did? White-collar worker. Why is he sleeping on the bench? Because he lost his job, and he has not been able to find one. What we know is that at the peak of unemployment in New York City, there was about one-third of the population unemployed. This guy's part of that one-third. Um, Roosevelt comes along. We'll talk about Roosevelt a little later. Um, but FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, comes along with the New Deal. One of the things he does in New York City is he commissions the building of the Lincoln Tunnel, you know, the one Buddy walked through. Y'all are killing me. You know, buddy. Goodbye, buddy. The elf, yes. He walked through the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, it's been there a long time. And then LaGuardia Airport, which is, had already been built, but it was in need of some repair and restoration. So those are a couple of the things that happened um, during the Depression, trying to put people back to work. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. This is probably my favorite picture up here. Why do I say that? What do you think? What do you see? She has a baby, and I like babies, right? Okay, she's married. Okay. She's, well, yeah, there's a house of some description. What is this? What is this? No TV. It's a stove. 
Okay. And then you said what? Allie. Allie, she said, you said what? Allie. But you said she was smiling. smiling. She is, isn't she? What's she smiling at? Her baby. Her baby. Okay. And I wrote one word for this. I looked at that woman. First of all, she's a pretty woman. But secondly, she has a look about her that you don't see in many Depression era pictures. She looks hopeful. And maybe it's because she's brought life into the world. Who knows? But she looks hopeful. So that's my favorite picture. What about this guy? He is obviously working. What gave that away? He's digging, right? What's he digging? He's planting something. What's he planting? Tree. Remember, what had happened in the West? What had happened in Oklahoma and Texas? The soil. What happened to the soil? It dried up. The winds blew. It blew the soil away because there was nothing there to hold it. One of the things the Civilian Conservation Corps did was they would go through places where the soil had been damaged or where the trees had been cut down and they would replant um, to reestablish the forest. This one looks like there was a forest fire. If you look closely, looks like burned stumps. Um, and this, this is probably the best thing that Roosevelt did. He established the Civilian Conservation Corps and they basically worked. It put Americans back to work. Um, they would live in camps, um, men and women in different camps, and they would do projects like this. Um, if you go into a, a small town today um, and you go to the post office, if it was built in the 30s, it was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. There's a building on our campus that was built by the CCC, the one they just put the fence around down here which is going to be the new 4th uh, and 5th grade building. No, we're about to re redo one, though. And we can't do what we wanted to do to the building because it was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, so it's protected. We can't change the way it looks. Um, but a lot of state parks in Georgia were built by the CCC. Um, Vogel State Park up in North Georgia was the first. And then uh, one close by is Alexander Stevens State Park over in um, Tolliver County. Anyway, guys would work. They would send money where? Home. And that was part of the deal. They had to send money home. But they were fed. They were clothed. Um, they were housed. So it was a pretty good deal. What about these hooligans? What are they doing? Why are they breaking stuff? How old do you think they are? Okay. Yeah, I would say they're like eight, nine maybe. When you were eight or nine years old, would your mama send you out to play with a hatchet? No. If she did, we'd be calling one of y'all nubby because you would have cut something off. So what we, ha what we have are children playing with hatchets with no adult supervision. Do you notice that? I mean, the, the only adult in this picture is standing right there. And then I guess whoever's taking the picture. So what are they doing? They're actually working. Are they getting paid for working? No. They're getting... Um, warm from what they're doing. Kids would often have to go to work. They would babysit so mama could go to work or maybe they'd take care of the neighbor kids. They would clean houses. They'd shine shoes. They'd deliver papers. And if you lived outside the city, you would pick crops. Um, so what these fellows are doing is they are chopping firewood. These are packing crates, today's cardboard boxes, and they are chopping that so they can take it home, also so they can sell it. So they're working. Um, one of the things that we see happen during the Great Depression is more and more teenagers stay in school because there are no jobs for them to go to. So they continue um, with their education. 
1936, about 65% of teenagers attended high school, and that was a record high. So what these guys are doing, again, is just chopping wood. All right. Next one is probably the most famous of Depression-era pictures. It's taken by a woman named Dorothea Lange. Um, she worked for the federal government, running around, taking pictures like this one. Um, anybody ever seen this before? Yeah, it's pretty common. It's, it's, if you look up Depression Era picture on Google, you're going to find that. Her name is Florence Thompson. Florence? No, that's definitely a female name. Florence. How old do you think she is? Forties. Allie said fifty. Okay, she's thirty-two years old in the picture. She has five children. You would look old too if you had five children. And she is a pea picker in California. She's one of those who was from Oklahoma who moved out west, and she is following the crops. She and her husband picking peas, picking peaches, picking strawberries, whatever. Um, when Dorothea Lang took this picture, Miss Thompson had just sold her home. What do you th think her home looked like? Probably nice. Picket fence. Indoor plumbing. Anybody want to add to that? Or yeah. What she sold was a tent. That's what she was living in with five kids. A tent. There's actually an interview with Florence Thompson on YouTube that was taken probably in the 40s. Um, and in that interview, we find out that Florence Thompson is not only a mother of five, she's a single mother of five because her husband, Cleo, had died. Normal work day, she would pick 450 pounds of cotton. She ultimately moves to Modesto, California in 1945 and works in a hospital. Um, and so her life is not terrible after this. But again, she's representative of how the Depression impacted people. Um, I can guarantee you she never thought she'd be living in a tent in California, picking peas, trying to raise five children all by herself. But there she is. Can you imagine? Go home this afternoon and Daddy says, well, I sold the house. We're, we're going to live in a tent. What? Uh, he wasn't that old. I don't know. Probably illness. All right. What else we got? Anybody know what's going on there? Well, yeah. That's part of what's going on there. They're trying to buy animals. What else are they doing? No, no, no groceries there. Well, what is in the background? Where do you usually find barn? On a farm. On a farm. Why would there be that big crowd of people at a farm? What? An auction. Why? Because whoever owned that farm lost the farm. The bank foreclosed on their farm. And what would happen? This is in Iowa, but this is a picture you'd see repeated wherever there was farmland um, when, a, when the bank foreclosed on a farm, the neighbors would come to the auction and prevent the auction from taking place, um, trying to help their neighbors. And so that's what you have going on there. How about this one? What do you notice? What about the ground? 
Uh, it's kind of rocky, right? And then somebody said, what? They're all girls. Are they girls or are they women? women. Yeah. Say they're women. She looks angry. And she's holding hatchets in her hand. Maybe she's going to line them up against the wall and throw hatchets at them. I don't think so. What else do you notice in the picture? They got baskets. Why would they have baskets? Maybe they're going for an Easter egg hunt. Or maybe they're going on a picnic. Somebody said earlier it was a prison camp. Does that look like a prison camp? Do they look like they're in prison? No. They got a dog, but they are in a camp. Um, not summer camp, not a Girl Scout camp. Those are good guesses. These are not girls, by the way. These are full-grown women. And they belong to the... Remember the guy that was planting the trees? They're part of the Civilian Conservation Corps. And they have a day off and they're going on a picnic. What else do you notice? There are three women in there that are different. Majority of the people in that picture are white. But then there are three black women. Which tells you that at least wherever this picture was taken, the Civilian Conservation Corps was integrated. You had black and white working and living together, which would have been really unusual for that time. So yeah, they're going on a picnic. Some of these girls look like they haven't missed a meal. I'm just saying. All right. Who is that? Right there's President Roosevelt. Where do you think he is? Uh, at a camp. What kind of camp? Civilian Conservation Corps camp up in Virginia. He's visiting one of those camps. Again, this is his idea, and he wanted to see how it was working. <clears throat> what is this? Yeah, citizen photos. One of the things that is continuing to happen during the Great Depression is people are continuing to immigrate into the United States. How do you think those people are received in the United States? Do people, are people happy to have them? No, they're not. Um, because there already aren't enough jobs, and more people means there's even fewer jobs to go around. So immigrants are competition for the people that already live here. Um, but yet, you can tell from this street corner, because there's like three or four different businesses doing the same thing, that there's a need for, um, for this kind of service so people can go and get their citizenship papers filled out. This is also right next door or close by the U.S. Department of Labor in Washington, D.C. So people would go there trying to find a job. One of the things they would have to do is begin the process of citizenship. All right. What about this guy? Huh? Yeah, he's just looking. What do you know about him, or what can you figure out about him? Is he on a train? Or is he going on a train? Maybe he's waiting for a train, and in, and in fact, that's what he's doing. Does he have a ticket for that train? He does not. He is a he's a hobo. I was waiting for somebody to say it. Well, I mean, he he doesn't look like what you would expect, does he? Somebody traveling on a train you would think would be a little raggedy. He doesn't look raggedy. He does. He's, is he young or is he old? He's fairly young. He looks, somebody just said what? Put together? Who said put together? Uh, yeah. 
I mean, he's... Well, he don't look ratty. No. I mean, if you saw him walking down the street, you'd think, hmm, it's a well-dressed man. Kylie would want to talk to him. So, um, don't know the guy's name, but I can tell you that he quit school after his sophomore year and lived at home. Girls, that is not a good sign. If he quit high school and he's living at home, that is not a good sign. Run. Do not talk to him. Do not bat an eye at him. Run. So, he lived at home for a couple of years, moved to Los Angeles, and worked at a hotel. Um, he cussed out the cook in the restaurant one day and got fired. And now, he is riding the rails. He is a hobo. I got mad at him. Because Dorothea Lang was out taking pictures. No. Nah. Because if she did, she'd never have anybody else pose for her picture. Because word would get around. Yeah, he'd just wait till there's nobody around and he would jump on it. He, um, in this picture, he said that he had a clean white shirt and he was prepared to look for work when his money was completely gone. So he's got a plan. I'm going to wait till all my money is gone and then I'm going to find a job. Does that sound like a good plan? No. no. But that's his plan. In fact, he said this, I don't know where I'll go hunting for a job. Yes, I didn't go home. I'm on the bum. These agency jobs, you got to buy them, and I ain't got the dough. He is in California at this point in time, and he's headed towards Seattle. That's where he thinks he wants to be. He's got money in his pocket. How much does he have? How much? Ten bucks? Fifty cent? Eight dollars? A dollar and eighty cents. When's he going to find a job? When he, is he going to be finding a job soon? More than likely. $1.80 was a lot of money. It might last him a couple of weeks, particularly if he's not having to pay for transportation. Still got to eat. Got to have somewhere to sleep. Um, and again, you, you had a lot of men that were just traveling the country looking for something, whatever they could find um, to provide them with what they needed. All right. What about these guys? What are they doing? They're eating. Okay. That's good. They're plates. This little girl is obviously shoveling something in, or maybe that's a little boy. I don't know. Kind of hard to tell. I'll let her. I'll let her. Okay, he's got a knife. He's got something in his other hand. Maybe he's buttering a piece of bread or cutting something. What's on his plate? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. What, what time of year do you think this is? I'll give you a hint. There's a calendar hanging on the wall. You can see one thing on it. You can see one thing, and that is... The 25th is a different color than the 24th and the 26th. December 25th is what? This is Christmas dinner. This is Christmas dinner. Think about just a couple of months ago. Y'all probably had Christmas dinner, right? You know, folks came over, or you went somewhere, and you had a nice Christmas dinner. Turkey, ham, you know, makes me hungry. It's not what they're having. I don't know what they're having, but it ain't much. Where? Right here? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Might be a bar of soap. But there are no chairs. I just noticed. Well, you know, 
somebody, I had a conversation yesterday. We went to Joel and Mary's house, and people that we ate lunch with had a merry-go-round, the old kind that you'd find in the playground. Y'all don't remember those? I do. They had them on that. Yeah. And um, we were talking about the fact that you don't find those very often anymore. You know, you, you go out in playgrounds today are safe. I'm like, yep, when we went out and played on the playground, there was always that chance you could die. The kids were a lot tougher. She's used to eating standing on a box. She falls off, what does she do? She gets back up, finishes eating. Because if she don't, her brother's going to steal her biscuit. So, all right. Um, last one. Again, this is a Dorothea Lang um, photograph. What do you see? He's working. That's a plow. He's got a he's got an animal of some description tethered to it, probably a mule. What? He's not tied to it. He's he's holding the animal. There's an animal in front of it. Probably a mule, huh? How's he dressed? What does that tell you about him? Yeah, he does look a little deflated. Never thought about it, but he does. You know, he's barefooted. He's got holes. Those don't look like they fit him very well. Which means they're probably somebody else's or they were hand-me-downs. Yeah, this is a kid. This young man is a sharecropper. And again... Um, pretty indicative of the people that you would find on farms in the South. Um, in the 1930s, 65% of all farmers in Alabama were sharecroppers, which means probably had that same percentage here in Georgia, about 60 to 65% of all farmers were sharecroppers, which means they're not getting rich. World War II comes along, and I said last, whenever we were in here last, that World War II is one of the things that ends the Great Depression. And it really changes the way people live. All these sharecroppers no longer have to share crop. There are jobs for them to get. There are jobs for them to go to. So, all right, tomorrow we will finish up, or we'll begin finishing up, um, talking about, Georgia in the early 20th century. Um, we'll look at Roosevelt's New Deal, probably take a couple of days to do that, and then we'll, um, we'll test early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday. All right, any questions? Good, because I have no answers. No, you do not have homework. Would you like some? Okay. <laughs>